The modern-day airport is designed with designated spaces for different aircraft operations. Spaces for planes to board passengers and load cargo. Spaces for ground operations. And obviously, a significant amount of airport space is reserved for flight operations, takeoff and landing, the runway. In a catastrophic case of human error on October 31st, 2000, a large passenger plane would crash at Taipei in Taiwan on the ground killing 83 people. A Boeing 747 collided with ground objects on takeoff, but why did this happen? Why did Singapore Airlines Flight 6 take off on a runway that was not clear? It was the evening of October 31st, 2000. Singapore Airlines Flight 6 had taken off from Singapore, Southeast Asia on a flight to Los Angeles. It is one of the longest routes at Singapore Airlines, and as such, there was a scheduled stopover in Taipei and Taiwan. Chiang Kai-shek Airport is located west of Taipei and is one of the largest and busiest airports in Asia. Singapore Airlines Flight 6 would arrive here in the late evening that day. The plane was a Boeing 747-400, the then latest model of the iconic plane. This particular plane rolled off of the Boeing production line in early 1997, being the 1099th plane built of the type. It was just one of two planes in the Singapore Airlines fleet to be painted in a colourful tropical livery designed to promote the airline's first and business class products. On the flight deck of Flight 6 was a crew of three. The more modern cockpit of the 747-400 model had eliminated the role of the flight engineer as was needed on the previous models. Despite this, there were still three pilots on the flight deck. 41-year-old Captain Fung Chi Kong up till this point had accumulated over 11,000 flight hours, with over 2,000 of those in the 747. He was accompanied on the flight deck by the first officer, 36-year-old Latif Serrano, a much less experienced pilot with just 552 hours logged in the plane. When it comes to hours in the 747, the relief pilot, 38-year-old Nung Kang Leng, had logged the most hours with 4,500. He also had logged over 5,500 hours in total. All pilots had a good relationship with their airline, with records indicating no disciplinary problems. In the cabin were a further 17 crew members. Over the past week, a Category 2 typhoon had been making its way through this region of East Asia. Typhoon Sangsen had formed one week prior to the Singapore Airlines Flight 6 incident. Originating on the west side of the Pacific Ocean, the storm passed over the Philippines before making its way north, passing over Taiwan and subsequently Taipei and Chiang Kai-shek airport towards the end of the typhoon's life. It would dissipate the day after on November 1st. Having arrived in Taipei in the late evening on October 31st, weather begins to slowly deteriorate as the oncoming storm approaches, the center of the storm of which was roughly 360 miles south of the airport. Winds taken from the storm indicated wind speeds of 75 knots gusting up to 90. Visibility at the airport, however, was less than one kilometer. The plane was parked on stand Bravo 5 on the south side of the airport, where the flight crew reported for duty at 9.53 p.m. local time. Winds here were also quite strong. According to the accident report, weather observations taken at 10.40 p.m. measured a wind speed of 38 knots gusting up to 58. In preparing for departure, the flight crew would have read the dispatch notes provided to them, which would have contained crucial information pertaining to the flight ahead. In these dispatch notes, a notice to airmen on NOTAM stated that runway 5 right was partially closed for construction work. The airport at Taipei at the time consisted of three runways. There was a singular runway on the south side of the airport, marked runway 06 and 24 at each respective end. Aircraft that evening were making departures to the east, so runway 06 was used but only for departing aircraft. On the north side of the airport, there were a further two runways running parallel to one another, marked runway 05 left and right, and runway 23 left and right. Runway 05 right was closed for construction work. When the airport was originally constructed in the 1970s, it was planned to not have two twin runways on this side of the airport. Instead, what became runway 05 right was actually supposed to be a parallel taxiway marked as Taxiway Alpha. During construction, it was determined that another runway needed to be built in the event that runway 0523 would be closed. 
thus Taxiway Alpha was repurposed into a runway. Beyond the end of runway 05 right, a cargo terminal was built. Eventually, this runway was to be repaired and repurposed again back into a taxiway. By the time that the accident flight in question occurred, the remaining section of the runway was used for taxi operations, but not takeoff and landing. At 10.57pm, the flight crew of Singapore Airlines Flight 6 contacted clearance delivery at Taipei Airport. Over the next several minutes, the flight crew would come into contact with multiple air traffic controllers. Once ATC clearance was given, the flight crew tuned into the ATIS, Automated Terminal Information Service, where they received Information Tango, which also highlighted the runway situation at the airport. Also highlighted was weather information, with runway visibility of just 450 meters. Winds were now 35 knots, gusting 52. Pushback from Gate Bravo 5 started at around 11 p.m., with taxi clearance being requested at 11.05. It was here that the ground controller began giving the flight crew a set of taxi instructions. In the controller's transmission, they initially said to taxi to runway 06, before they quickly corrected themselves to giving clearance for flight 6 to taxi to runway 05 left. Singapore 6, taxi to runway 06 via taxiway, correction, runway 05 left via taxiway Sierra Sierra, West Cross and November Papa. According to the accident report, it had become clear that the flight crew were unsure of the taxi clearance that they had just been given. The first officer going on record saying that he missed that transmission. The captain, however, read back the clearance to the controller. The flight crew would then take some time to discuss the route to this runway from their current ground position. Being on the south side of the airport, the taxi out to runway 05 left is a relatively long one. Looking back at the controller's taxi instructions, we can see the route that they wanted Flight 6 to take. Flight 6 needed a taxi along taxiway Sierra Sierra. West Cross refers to a taxiway on the southwest side of the airport, which joins the two almost symmetrical sides of the airport together. After the West Cross, Flight 6 would enter taxiway November Papa, traversing parallel to the end of the set of twin runways. Not noted in the controller's clearance was the need to cross runway 05 right to eventually enter runway 05 left on the far side. Captain Fung Chi Kong was the one at the controls managing the taxi and takeoff on this flight, and even acknowledged to the controller of the need to depart on runway 05 left. Because of the rather adverse weather conditions, the flight crew commented on the strong winds and were concerned of potential skidding. As a result, the flight crew taxied the plane slowly to the end of the runway. With the time now being 11.11pm, Singapore Airlines Flight 6 had now made it onto and taxiing down taxiway November Papa. The ground controller hands the crew off to the tower at 11.12. Two minutes later at 11.14, the crew were making note of which taxiway to turn onto before turning onto the runway. With such low visibility, the controllers in the control tower could not see the plane from their vantage point. Many airlines in Southeast Asia, including Singapore Airlines, often take off in poor weather conditions. At this far end of the airport, there are multiple taxiways on and off of the runway. The taxiway that Singapore Airlines Flight 6 was to take onto runway 05 left was November 1. At 11.14, the instruction for taxiing into position and hold was given followed by the takeoff clearance, despite the plane at this point only just approaching the end of the taxiway. The flight crew was supposed to taxi the plane over the closed for flight operations runway 05 right. However, on this night, Singapore Airlines Flight 6 did not cross the runway, instead turning early, lining up with runway 05 right instead of 05 left, which was where the plane was supposed to be. Halfway down runway 05 right was multiple sets of construction equipment including excavators, bulldozers, rollers, concrete barriers, and multiple miscellaneous machinery, which had been left overnight to wait out the typhoon before work resumed. The measured runway visibility of less than half a kilometer meant that the flight crew of the accident flight could not see the equipment obstructing their runway. The controllers in the tower can also not see the plane as lined up for takeoff on the wrong runway. The time was now 11.16, when the four engines on the Boeing 747 were powered up. For the next 30 seconds, the takeoff roll would appear to be normal. 10 seconds into the takeoff roll, the standard 80 knot callout was made by the first officer. In a single moment at 11.17 and 16 seconds, the captain saw the ground obstructions on the runway come into view for a brief moment, exclaiming, something's there. 
Just one second later, the cockpit voice recorder records the first impact with the ground objects. Flight 6 collided with multiple concrete barriers on the runway before colliding with multiple pieces of machinery. By the time that the flight data recorder went silent, the recorded speed around this time was a ground speed of 131 knots. A crane located on the ground tore away the left wing, which caused the midsection of the plane to burst into flames. Subsequently, most fatalities in this accident came from the plane's midsection, where many who perished were seated above the center fuel tanks. The fuselage broke into two, separating around the galley which separates the rear cabin to that which lays in the midsection. Immediately following the crash on the runway, air traffic controllers hailed emergency services to the site. Over 40 firefighting vehicles and 58 ambulances arrived on the scene, along with over 400 personnel. It took firefighters around 10 minutes to control the fire. The accident claimed the lives of 83 people. A further 71 suffered injuries ranging from minor to severe. A total of 96 people survived. The three members of the flight crew all survived. First Officer Latif Serrano escaped with minor injuries. Pilot error was ruled to be a major contributor to the accident. Singapore Airlines initially denied claims that the pilots took off from the wrong runway and even denied that there were fatalities. The company later retracted these statements once it was proven without question that this was indeed the case. The Taiwanese Aviation Safety Council determined that the flight crew did not appropriately review their taxi routing as all relevant charts and information was available to the pilots. Their conclusion also highlighted that the pilots did not appropriately cross-check that the plane was on the correct runway by observing the primary flight displays which on the 747-400 can be done on the navigation display screen. The findings of the Taiwanese authorities proved to be controversial in Singapore. Singaporean officials highlighted that the airport lighting and markings were not of an adequate standard. Technology to display ground movements of aircraft at an airport was not installed at Taipei. Many modern airliners in the modern day now come equipped with a runway awareness system, which gives audible readouts to pilots to indicate which runway they are on. This technology also works for approaching a runway for landing. The accident plane's sister aircraft soon had its promotional livery removed. The crash of Singapore Airlines Flight 6 was only one of two major incidents to occur at the airline. Since 2000, the airline has not seen a fatal accident. Good evening everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video interesting, be sure to subscribe as there is a new video every Saturday. Next week, we are going to closely examine an accident which has had very little written about it. It should be a pretty nice video. I am also in the middle of moving right now, but video production has not been affected thus far, but I will keep you notified. Anyway, it is time once again to thank my patrons over on Patreon for their support. If you would like to get your name featured or right at the end of the next video, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from £3 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comment. You will also get new videos two days early before they go out publicly on YouTube. Thank you to my £5 tier patrons, Aidan Montgomery, a new patron Derek Bean, Hector Palmatellas, Ian Tatum, Jacopo, KTP123, Ken Zachman, Christy, Leon St. Jennings, Maria Innes, MG, Pacman7, Panic Chicken, Surya Melody, and So FP. A big thanks as always to my generous £10 tier patrons, Daniel Hendricks, D. Rogers, Flaming Hot Cheetos Make My Butt Hurt, Mike Milton, Side Effect, Robert Hamilton, Roger Mayer, and Where Are My Cheetos? Thanks to everyone, and that is it from me this week. Have a good evening, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!